I wanted to sleep with Nola, so there's no need to apologize. I mean, the drama of it all. After more than a week of waiting, the highly anticipated season one reunion of the Ultimate Time South Africa finally happened. And yes, the cast turned it up and brought all the smoke. I actually expected the couples to be more self-conscious just a tiny bit more after an incredibly dramatic season that has attracted a lot of shock from around the world and a lot of backlash for some such as Nola and Kanya whose antics on the show opened them up to a wave of heated clapbacks from viewers but the season one cast kept the same energy and authenticity that helped the show become a massive hit for Netflix and instead they gave us a number of good bombshells that will surely be the talk of the town for days to come First of all, Label finally listened to what I told her through this channel last week. Nola is wasting your time, boo. Leave that man and go thrive with someone who can see your worth. Okay? And so, in an unexpected turn of events, Label dropped the bombshell and dumped Nola on the spot, ending their troubled relationship. You can't convince me that Label did not plan how she was going to execute her swift move because for one, Nola was completely caught off guard. Although, to be honest, Nola doesn't really seem to pay much attention to anything other than himself. Girl. Allegedly. <laughs> it's crazy that Lebo had not given him a reason to believe that, that there were serious issues in their relationship, especially ones that would make a breakup imminent. He was so blindsided by being dumped on national television that he stood up and left the set for a little while to catch some in. And even when Genesis followed him to explain that, yo bro, you really screwed up. You could tell Hori nah brah. He really just doesn't get it and for me, everything that went down during the season was enough grounds for a hard pass but gay. As Aiden said it, it's quite clear that Lebo still wanted to give their relationship a chance to see for herself for witty hey, it's house to let their boo wrap it up. But yeah, she didn't decide that morning to end things with Nola, not even the week before the reunion taping. My guess is she's known for a while and I think she wanted to give him a taste of his own medicine by leaving that part for the show. See, put it on the show the same way he went astray on the show. And if distance will make the heart grow fonder, then baby, let it grow fonder and fonder and fonder far away from you, baby. <laughs> Messy. No, that's messy. <laughs> yes. And did you clock how he was so preoccupied with how she had been talking to Isaac the whole time, and that Isaac already had the tea on their relationship not working way before he did? And then he goes on to say, "I gave up a job overseas to work on this relationship, and this is what you do to me." Clap if you care. <laughs> clap if you clap if you care. All of that after he couldn't even say outright whether or not he's still in love with Ruth. Look at this right here. Girl, boy, if you don't stop, pass up. Ruth is standing on business about the fact that she enjoyed every moment with Nola. She wants nothing more now though, as she is currently already seeing someone else right now. And that someone is not Isaac, with whom she broke up during the proposal after he'd been oh so dodgy about their relationship. They've both moved on, she doesn't regret having sex with Nola, and she wishes Isaac well, period. I know that's right. Genesis and Tabi have put their engagement on hold to work on their relationship before being able to finally make the commitment. The season had ended with the romantic and heartwarming proposal between the two, to which Tabi said yes. But almost as soon as the camera stopped rolling, couple admitted that they knew they needed some time to work on their relationship. There's a couple of things they need to work on and plus, they both realized that they needed to observe some traditions before being able to legitimately engage. So it's all on pause for now and the ring is nowhere in sight. <laughs> but they are actively working on getting to a place where they can bring their families together and be able to really seal it with the kids. Though, I must say, I couldn't help but feel like Tabby might still miss what she had with Lindy during their time as experimental spouses on the show. It's been a whole year later and it looks like Genesis hasn't been able to catch up to the beautiful way Lindy treated Tabby. Genesis Yena self admits ba, it took Lindy to remind him that Tabby is that girl and she deserves a whole lot more than what she's been bringing to the table. Oh, okay. okay, happy to know that they are working on it because Sana Lindile is so taken and his heart was really always with Caesar. Nothing has changed and in fact, the couple seems to be going from strength to strength now, still happily engaged and looking so good together. Lindile and Caesar revealed that they are looking to tie the knot by the end of this very year. 
more girl couldn't stop gushing about her man, talking about how she loves how he is so sure about her. That moment when he said they've already sent the letter to her family and started the process with the elders, eh, Ati, she will definitely be in Navi soon. They are both so lucky, but, and this is just me, okay, he is the luckiest man on that cast. What a stunning woman and the fact that she has the biggest and most beautiful heart. It's not hard to see why he's absolutely devoted to her. Such a beautiful spirit. And while Kanya had been the exact opposite in the season, she's now ready to do better. Wasting no time, Kanya apologized for fat shaming Cesagele during one of her scary outbursts on the show and took some kind of accountability. To be honest, I would have loved to have heard a deeper reflection from her about her behavior on the show, which was nothing short of abusive, toxic and unbearably inhumane. She said and did a whole lot more than Fed James Isagele. You know, that said, she did apologize. And I guess we couldn't stay too long on apologies because she and Gatego had bigger news to share. Although the show ended with her rejecting his promised ring because it was not what she wanted, it was not a marriage proposal. Boy, that's not. This is you, not marriage to hip hop. The two of them got back together and ding ding, a baby happened. Yep, Kanya and Gatego have a three month old son now, so they are very much still together. And they are also working on their obvious troubles and revealed that they are now in therapy to work on their issues. Gatego ventured out on a PR run to say, oh, She's actually not always like that. I pushed her to the edge on the experiment and I had never actually seen her like that before. Mm, right. And the clam, the set, and overall vibe, mood and content for the reunion. Let's get into it. Comment down below, like and share this video and subscribe to the channel. Aiden finally got a full-time job and that was the one requirement from his father-in-law. He's still very much committed to Courtney and Courtney to him. And you know what? I hope it works out. The ultimatum South Africa season 1 reunion carried all the necessary bombshells befitting for all the drama that took place this season. Salamina absolutely ate, even with her husband Hauser being absent. I think we got a good conclusion overall, with Label and Nola no longer being an item. I wonder if it'll stay that way though. I don't know, this seems to be the dynamic in their relationship to be honest. Kanya got her redemptive moment and she and Katego gave us a definitive update on their relationship. Lindy Lee and Cesar did the same in the best way as did Genesis and Tabi, Aiden and Courtney. And shouts out to the wardrobe and glam departments. Whew, what did you think of the Ultimatum South Africa reunion? Comment down below, like and share this video with somebody and subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching until the end. Until next time, bye.